Chase on! Just come down to your course. Of the more than 70,000 athletes playing college football in a given year, just over 16,000 become eligible for the NFL draft, with less than 2% actually going pro. In 2013, Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey was in that 2%. A man, a myth, a legend. 6'5, 260, tall, dark, and handsome, sort of similar to myself. We may not see eye to eye, but today we're going toe to toe in Kelsey's home turf to see if I got the goods to even imagine making it in the NFL. Ah, ah that's on me. All right, that's me. You know what? That's why I got to move the tight end. When I'm on the field, I'm a completely different person. I change into this alter ego into always being the attacker. Okay. So today, Kill your alter you. ego is Nana. Nana. Okay. What's your, your alter Nana. ego? My alter ego is Bobby Blanco, but that's for a different reason. Blanco. Today, Kill your alter Vico. ego is Nana. What is that? Hands up, right in the gut, and you're coming back to me. What are you doing, Nana? The end zone is this way. way. Have you been a tight end all throughout your career? I moved to tight end my junior year of college. I got into some trouble, and when I came back on the team, the coach that was there, Butch Jones, told me that he doesn't need a quarterback anymore. Once I moved to tight end, I found a love for the position in the game and just sort of uh, taking it from there. Red A's hot! When I was in high school, my nickname was tight end, but that's because I have like a really in shape derriere. Okay. Ha! Hands up, get yeah, right in the chest. OMG. It's the Walmart special. <laughs> <laughs> And one player who understands the dance that is football all too well is former Colt safety Matthias Farley. Why are we in a ballet studio? I have a long history with ballet. My younger brother Silas, he dances for the New York City Ballet. So okay. I've obviously watched it a lot, seen him teach classes and take classes, but I've, I've never done it. And as far as the skill set that it takes to do ballet and the skill set that it takes to play in the league, is there a crossover? I think there is a crossover. I mean, a lot of things come down to your core strength, your balance, do a lot of like isometric holds and stuff. You make that look so effortless. Man. We wear tights in football, they wear tights in ballet. So. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Graceful. That's about to get real. That is a unique outfit you have on there. Uh, I'm a unique guy, so yeah, uh, it fits, absolutely. I guess, right? She's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start with plies. Okay. First position. Tell me a little bit about the safety position. It's kind of like being the quarterback of the defense. You have to make a lot of checks. You have to see things on the fly. Plie and stretch. Do you always go this fast? <laughs> you know, you could be in man-to-man -man coverage. You could be in a zone. You could be working with a linebacker or a corner. So there's a lot of moving parts, and uh, you have to be on your toes a lot. Okay, so yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Loosening up the hips is what this exercise is good for. As a DB, you gotta have loose hips. And why is that? You gotta be able to put your foot in the ground and open up or break down or to the side and all of that comes from. From your hip? Yeah. I think this is as far as I go. This is the last time y'all gonna hear Johnny Man is. Good <laughs> luck. This is XPE creator Tony Villani. Getting out of bed is more difficult than this for me every morning, so I hope we're stepping it up. And this is Pittsburgh Steelers center Marquise Pouncey and his brother Mike, center for the LA Chargers. What am I doing? You gotta try to get by him inside the cone. <laughs> What's that over there? <laughs> that, my friends, is what training for the NFL looks like. But now, Cincinnati Bengals linebacker Carl Lawson is going to show me what it feels like. What happened to my shirt? This man happened to my shirt. Listen, man, I would actually be more afraid with you coming across the middle <laughs> than I would catching COVID-19. <laughs> I think a lot of times we look at uh, sports figures, we look at celebrities as if they live in a different world and they're not necessarily affected by the same things that everyone else is. But this coronavirus, what's going on right now, this pandemic, it's affected everybody equally. So uh, just kind of give me an idea of, of what you've been going through and how you've been able to kind of like adapt to all the changes that have gone on in your life. Oh man, I was actually in Tampa, Florida. That's where I trained at in the offseason. And then once they shut uh, Florida down, uh, you know, me and my wife and my little girl, we came down to uh, Lakeview, South Carolina, where, where we are, my hometown. And, you know, just trying to find somewhere to just to work out, find a way, you know, just trying to stay safe and just have some good quality time. But, you know, 
on the athletic side, it, it sucks for it sucks for me because I'm in the country and mm-hmm. I don't have any doctors down here where I can go to a chiropractor every day or get acupuncture, everything that I need so I can get healthy for the season. So, I mean, I just got to find a way to actually work hard but don't work too hard as I want to because I don't have them doctors. And, you know, it sucks for someone who only goes 100 miles per hour to say, okay, you got to back, back off a little bit. Obviously, you, you know, you're at the top of your game. What have you been doing to stay ready for when, you know, this, this mandate is finally lifted that, that you could hit the ground running? Um, well, my uh, trainer in Tampa gave me a workout to go by uh, the NFL. Gave every NFL player um, some equipment they can use in their home. And like you said, I'm from the country. So, you know, outside running around, that's something that, you know, I do 24-7. So that's, that's no thing about just me just going outside, just taking off running and staying in shape. Come here. Come here. On the field, NFL players are expected to take devastating hits and get back in the game. But when life blindsided Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver Marquise Goodwin with some agonizing pain, he had no other choice but to call a timeout. All right, y'all. This right here, this is my reason, y'all. She is the reason I'm opting out for this season. Our baby girl, Marae, she is five months and growing like a weed. Yes, she is. Our journey of parenthood was very tough. It was a long road. We had to do an emergency surplage, which didn't hold. And then, needless to say, we end up losing the baby. I felt like I had to prove to my coaches and new team that I was dedicated to winning. And I wouldn't let anything keep me from that goal, not even my family. That good one is gone! He ended up scoring his first touchdown of the season. The team won their first game. I had to make a decision. And I ended up flying back. Again, we held the babies, took pictures, videos, like, dang, they look like me. They got my features, they got my fingernails. They survived for about an hour before their hearts just stopped. Dang, you coming out today? You coming out today? We finally were blessed to bring home our first living child, our rainbow baby. Oh, it's a girl. We went through a storm. Just being fortunate enough to bring her home, it was like that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know, she's our pot of gold and she's our rainbow. Daddy love you, baby. They call you the strongest man on the team. How'd you get that rep? I've been lifting strong for like 10 years straight. You know, so like after the season, a lot of people take a break. And I say like, I don't take a break from working out. I just take a break from getting hit. Do you think now that your contract has changed, your role in the team has changed, do you feel like there's more pressure? You know, I always prepared like I was starting. So now I actually am starting, so I was already ready. I'm like, okay, let's let's do this. The pressure that the team has put on me, that's like, yeah, that's great, but I, I'm doing this for me as well. The outside pressure that is being put on me is nothing compared to the pressure that I put on myself. 100%. If you have high expectations for yourself, then you're probably gonna exceed what other people had for you. And if you're doing that, that's how you keep leveling up and keep, you know, raising your own bar. You've been referred to as the underdog, but I'd say you're not the underdog, you were just overlooked. I was talking to my agent today, it's like, I'm not doing anything different than I have been. It's just now people know who I am. There's like a more of a spotlight on me. It's like, the only thing that's changed is the media coverage on my name. That's my ball head, you see that right there? <laughs> you, you play guitar too? I don't play guitar, that's my celebration though. <laughs> my, my, I'm the hit the air guitar every time, man. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.